Hey, what's happening YouTube? I hope you're having a fantastic day. I am having a great day. I've been doing a lot of propagating lately. I've got a bunch of videos for those, but we're going to talk about those uh, later. Um, I don't have any shout outs. I did actually, last night I got four new subscribers and none of their names popped up in an email. So, whoever you mystery people are, thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. All right, so today's topic actually is going to be from my personal experience and what I know when running a, a planted aquarium and a, a self-sustaining ecosystem, a huge question people always wonder, how many fish can I have in a tank? So I'm going to give you a general rule of thumb when it comes to dealing with plants. I don't deal with bare tanks with fruity pebbles at the bottom. That's a whole nother story. Okay, so when we're talking about a self-sustaining ecosystem and how many fish, yes, size uh, matters for the fish. So I have several different size fish here that we'll talk about um, and how many you can have uh, per gallon. But the most important thing that you need to know is that if you're going to have a self-sustaining um, ecosystem, your uh, inhabitants need to be on a very low spectrum, okay, because they're going to produce waste. Now, the waste that they produce does two things. One, it produces ammonia, which your root feeder plants will eat, and in their waste also has whatever nutrients that was in the food that you've been feeding them. So um, it could have, um, you know, potassium, calcium, magnesium, those types of things. Okay, now the other thing that it creates is uh, nitrates, right? Um, and uh, nitrates and ammonia are both created from dead organic uh, tissue of any kind. Dead plants, poop, dead fish, all of that stuff. Okay, so if you have a fully planted tank, and I mean I go above and beyond with plants. I make sure that there is, I mean, even in the water column, loaded with plants. I mean, if I don't have ballast, you know, tall plants, I don't really like stem plants that much. It just depends on what you like. But, you know, if you don't have a lot of tall plants from top to bottom and you got like a carpet, put a, a bunch of floaters on the top of whatever you choose, um, which are, uh, you know, any kind, um, uh, salvinia, um, frog bit, water lettuce, um, guppy grass is great, water sprite, all this is all floatable stuff and those things will eliminate a lot of excess uh, nitrates that are in the water column. Alright, so here's my general rule of thumb in a heavily planted tank, okay, so we're not talking, we're, we're going to exclude hardscape and all of that. We're just going to pretend that you have a flat substrate straight across your tank with nothing but plants. All right? General rule of thumb. Uh, I don't do fish any larger than three inches. And there's a huge reason for that, but that'll be another topic for another day. Uh, three inch fish, one per five gallons in a heavily planted tank. Fish that are one to two inches, two per five gallons. Now fish that are a half inch, like rasboras, three per five gallons. Okay, now three inch fish, uh, there's lots to choose from in that range. Uh, white skirt tetra, black skirt tetra, gold skirt tetras, uh, bleeding hearts, those are all around three inches. One to two inch long fishes would be all your live bearers, like uh, guppies, platies, mollies, etc. Um, but I want to talk about live bears for a minute and what they do to your um, planted aquarium and aquascape because they can they can wreak havoc. Uh, first let's talk about how to breed them like guppies, platies, mollies okay you get a male you get a female you put them in the tank and they're gonna breed and guess what when a female like guppy I think it's harder to get them not to breed 
than it is to get them to breed. You don't have to do anything special, like with egg scatterers, everything has to be perfect. Um, the thing is when a female guppy um, or inler, once she becomes pregnant, it never stops. She will drop babies every week forever until until she dies. And the reason for this is that they'll be loaded with however many babies, could be up to 20, but they can actually decide how many they want to release at a time. One week they may only drop three. The next week they may drop 10. The next week after that they drop five. The week after that they drop the last two. And once they've dropped that last two, they're immediately pregnant again. And it just keeps going and going and going. Now, because of this, there are a lot of people, and I understand, that um, they want to save, you know, their fry. Um, oh, I got, uh, I got ten babies in here. I need to isolate them so they don't die or, or get eaten. When you're running a self-sustaining ecosystem, trust me when I tell you this, that if you're dealing with live bears, don't do anything. Let them keep their population under control, and they will. I mean, they'll eat their own fry the minute they're born. You know, the strong, the ones that are instinctively smart, as soon as they're bo born, they will bolt and they will hide for months and stay in that hidden spot and wait for food to fall to them, and they won't leave that area, you know. Um, and uh, the parents, yeah, they will hunt them out and kill them. Because um, also instinctively, they don't want their area being overpopulated for one thing, you know, so, or you can just stick with males. If you're going to do a community tank and you want some tetras and, you know, inlers and guppies, don't put any females of inlers and guppies in there or your population is going to go out of control. All right. Now, these numbers that I have are numbers that I have been experimenting for years as to how much. Uh, waste rooted plants can tolerate from how many fish per gallon and then what the rhizomes will pick up okay so because what you're trying to do is you're trying to get to a point to where you have a perfectly balanced ecosystem where you shouldn't have to do water changes anymore okay you can get to that point where you have the exact number of fish for the amount of plants and the root feeders will absorb all of the ammonia and waste and all the night uh, traits they produce will all get absorbed by your floaters and rhizome plants and you won't have to be doing water changes for those uh, types of elements getting out of control because the plants are keeping up with them and all, all you have to do is just simply top your tank off when it evaporates there are some youtubers that tell you you can't do this because when you top it off what you're doing is Yes, you'll thin out the elements that are in there, but um, you'll still be compacting more and more elements over time. And this only happens if you're overpopulated with fish or understocked with plants. When you have everything worked out perfectly with plants and fish, there is no doubling up on potential ammonia disasters and nitrate disasters or nitrites or whatever because the plants are doing all the work for you and you're simply just topping it off. All right, now keep in mind these numbers change. If you have a tank that's only half planted and the other half is a hardscape, you're going to have to cut all these numbers in half. Okay, because, you know, your rocks don't thrive off of ammonia and garbage. Okay, <laughs> they, they just don't. Neither does uh, driftwood or anything like that. But on the bright side is, is if you're going to do a hardscape, there's your opportunity to load that side up uh, or that area with rhizome plants. So attach, you know, different types of Anubias and Java ferns to your rocks and your driftwood and mosses, etc. And and then you are compensating for a hardscape. Um, but some people don't want to do that. They, you know, they want like a partially planted tank and then they literally want like, you know, to make it look like a Rocky Mountain area on the other side. So, yeah, you're going to have to do the math. Um, but eventually, within six months to a year, if you are still having to do water changes because you're noticing nitrates are going through the roof, you know, 200 parts per million or ammonia 
uh, you know, spiking over one, uh, a 0.25 after a year, you're doing something wrong. You don't have enough plants or you have way too many fish. And through process of elimination, you'll find that number. But my numbers fit for a fully planted tank. Do not listen to any, your, if you were to let Google or ask someone at your local fish store how many fish you can have per, ga uh, per gallon, they're going to tell you in general one fish per gallon. Okay, no, that, that, that's, a, that's not going to work. I promise. Okay, I've been doing this long enough that I can tell you it's a lot to do this at home. They don't know anything. Okay, you learn through doing it yourself. I mean, you can read all day and night and, and watch a million videos and hear all these other different, you know, uh, versions on what aquascapers believe to be the truth. But when it comes down to it, the truth is what you have going on in your tank. All right. Um, you know, so however planted you have, if, if after six months to a year, you start to notice that you're still dealing with issues and having to do water changes once a week, you need, then at that point, you, you need to know that you need to start taking fish out or start adding more plants, one or the other. That's my big advice for you. All right, so now that we've talked about uh, fish and uh, population control and how many uh, you can have in a tank, uh, I'm going to have some upcoming videos uh, on propagation. Uh, now, for those of you who do tissue culture plants, and I do a lot, I love tissue culture, um, you will not find any videos on how to propagate particular uh, types of tissue cultured plants. Okay, I've got lots. All right, so uh, if you are interested in knowing how to propagate um, tissue cultured cryptocorns, red undulatus, um, uh, anubius, java ferns, actually I already have a bunch on java ferns, just go under my playlist on that. Let me know, we'll talk about that. I also have topics on diatoms and what those are. Um, and fertilizers. Fertilizers, they are a huge problem in the aquascaping community, especially in a planted tank and a low tech tank too. Okay, I don't recommend CO2 tanks to anybody. It, it, it is a lot of money, a lot of work, you know, and um, it's just, you don't need it. It's, it, it's, when you learn how to do it, I, I really feel it's a lot of laziness. Okay. Um, do it naturally. There's no one pumping CO2 in the lakes that flourish with plants, you know, so take your time, you know, you start planting your tank. Yeah. Wait three months to six, you know, three to six months before you start putting fish in there. And yes, you're going to be extremely impatient. Here's my advice to you. Multiple tank syndrome, get more than one tank going at a time. And, uh, before you know it, you'll start having, get, getting to add fish, you know, fish to this tank and then oh next week I get to add fish to that tank and you know next thing you know your wife thinks you're completely looney tunes and uh, you have so many across the house you're forced to build all your aquascapes in a storage room in the basement under the stairs in the complete dark um, talking to yourself to a camera on YouTube because you've run out of people to talk to about aquascaping fish and plants no like seriously like I, I can't even talk to my brother I, I'll call my brother and, and, you know, as soon as I start talking about fish, he'll be like, bro, I love you. I do not give a shit about nitrates. Can we please talk about something else? Movies, video games, please, for the love of God, and my wife too. You know, that's it. What goes on down here in my basement stays, on, stays down here. Unless one of the kids are interested and truly want to know, I know just not to talk about it. Trust me, people will get annoyed with your hobby. Um, so that's all I've got to say. Uh, if you have any topics in particular by any of my followers or someone who just randomly um, joins the club and has a genuine question they'd like to have a video made about, I will do it. I may already have an existing uh, video of it. Just go through my playlist. I have lots of videos in my playlist. They're all labeled. Um, so, and there we go. Uh, I hope you all have a fantastic day and uh, let me show you something right fast
because I, 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 I've been saying I've been doing some propagating. Get my carpeting going on pretty good. Talk about how I did that. Like in 24 hours, I got it like almost fully carpeted in crypts. And we'll discuss that another time. But, like always, I hope you had a great day. If you're having a terrible day, you're down in the dumps, depressed, get up and do something about it. What worked for me was a hobby. And my hobby, aquatics. You know, it, it, it never stops going. There's always something to learn, and you can always be fiddling. You know, like, I have 14 tanks. There's, every day, there's something that needs to be done with, with tanks. Maintenance, trimming. You know, pulling fish out, putting them in another tank, because someone tank got out of control, or something died. You know, also, that reminds me, if you have a perfectly balanced tank, you don't even have to pull dead fish out of there. You can let them decay and do their thing in their tank. Fish will, the other fish will eat what they want, and the rest will get recycled into your ecosystem. All right, anyway, before I start talking about random stuff and getting off subject, I'm going to let you go. But I appreciate you all. Please drop a comment, ask a question, and uh, let's go from there. We'll see you next time.